In this presentation, we're going to talk about solution sets of linear systems, uh, particularly uh, parameterization of a solution set. I'm going to do that as a specific example. Um, so in the introduction, we have here in 15, uh, 1.5 uh, introduction, homogeneous systems. So you've got these sections that you can go through. And they talk about the parametric vector form of a, a plane uh, using X is equal to SU plus TV, S, N, T, and R. This is a parameterization, uh, and we'll talk about that. I'll do a specific example so we can see what's going on with that. When we're working with these systems, you can work either with homogeneous linear systems, and a homogeneous linear system is simply one that is equal to zero, or um, we could work with a non-homogeneous system. So either way. So an example of that is here in 1.5.2, where they're looking at the trivial solution or non-trivial solution of a homogeneous system. Notice three variables, three unknowns, solve it, use our, our, our system to solve it. And when you get down to the final solution here, uh, you have, again, a reduced row echelon form, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, uh, minus 4 thirds, 0, 0, and then homogeneous system is 0, 0, 0. So that kind of leaves us short because we have one more variable than we can deal with. So a way of dealing with that is to take the basic variables x1 and x2 and just solve for those and leave x3 free. Uh, in this case, they used x3 as the variable, and they came up with a solution, 4 thirds x3, 0 x3, and then 1 x3, so that way they can actually express this solution as x3 times 4 thirds, 0, 1, or x3v, okay? This is a very common way of parameterizing it. I'm going to use the parameter t. I like to use a parameter that's different than any of the others. Uh, that we start with. So we'll see that in our example. So let's go ahead and start with an example and we'll see what we could do with that. Move this out of the way. So what I'm going to start here is uh, with this example. So I'm going to actually do a problem that's kind of a go-to problem in uh, linear algebra. We, we have a similar problem in uh, R2. The R2 problem that is a very common and important problem for us is uh, when we take two points, uh, point one, which might be x1, y1, and then point two, x2, y2, and then we find the equation passing through the two points, you know, and we use end up getting y equals mx plus b, and we do all that, slope everything, and we do that. So we're gonna do a similar problem, except we're gonna work in R3, but in R3, it's going to be a little different. So for us in R3, we're gonna actually have to do that a little differently. So I'll move that down. Get it out of the way. For us, what we're gonna do in R3 is we're gonna use three points and I'll write them out here. I'll use point one, let's say uh, one comma two comma minus one, point two, which will be two, three, one, two, three, one, and then point three, which will be three minus one, two. So the classic go-to thing, of course, is, you know, we're not gonna be looking for the line passing through these three points we're actually gonna look at the uh, plane, the equation of a plane that contains these three points. So we're gonna be doing the equation of the plane with P1, P2, and P3. And that plane is going to have a very similar uh, equation stock to us, AX plus by plus cz plus d equals to zero. 
So that's going to be the equation of a plane in R3. And notice this is a linear equation. X1 is power 1, Y is the power 1, Z is the power 1. And notice we have a D here as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to realize is that each of these points represented X, Y, Z. And we're going to come up with three equations of the plane. I'll we'll have to do that here. So, uh, and that means we'll start with like one. That'll be the first point. That'll be if I replace X by one and then Y by two and then my z by minus one then I have the d equals to zero there's my first equation my second equation will be similar a this will be a two plus b uh, three what did we have let's back up here three and then one for the z plus d equals to zero and then my third equation is going to be a, let's see, we have the point 3, comma, minus 1, comma, 2, plus d equals to 0. So that gives me this set of linear equations using those three points. So what I could do is translate these three equations to a system to a matrix system, an augmented matrix system, and I'll get 1, 2, minus 1, 1, 0, and then I'll have 2, 3, 1, 1, 0, and then I'll have uh, 3, minus 1, 2, 1, 0. So that's my augmented system. It's homogeneous, so the last column is zero, and then I can go ahead and solve this system. Now we can go ahead and do the effort and go ahead and do the Gauss-Jordan. So the whole thing with Gauss-Jordan would be pretty simple, right? I'll do one step to show you. So we choose to, and I'm gonna start using some of the words the book uses. We start, we want this to be, of course, a matrix that ends with one, 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 zero, 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 like that. This would be perfect, ideally with zeros everywhere else. So we want this part here to be perfect. And then we're gonna have uh, values here. And the zeros here in this homogeneous system is not gonna change. So ideally, that's what we wanna solve for. We're gonna pivot first on the one. Uh, so that means we'll remove two. So I'll just do one operation here. I'll take row two, and that would be two, three, one, one, zero. I'll take minus two row one, which would be minus two, minus four, minus two times minus one is positive two, minus two times one is minus two and zero. I would do that. Notice when I'm doing this, I'm choosing values uh, to make this very easy for me. I'm always trying to add straight up and down, a little bit like synthetic division, if you remember that. I make my life really easy, three minus, 4 minus 1, 1 and 2, 3, 1 and minus 2, minus 1, 0. And this I'll put in row 2. So I'm going to do a replacement here for row 2. So my new matrix will be 1, 2, minus 1, 1, 0, and then 0, minus 1, 3, minus one, zero, and then three, minus one, two, one, zero. And then what I can do with that is I'll get rid of the three uh, as well. And then I'll pivot on the three next and get use that to get rid of the three. And then I'll pivot on the one and I'll use the one to get rid of the two and then get rid of the negative one. And then I'll finally get this to be a one and I'll pivot on that and get these two. So eventually I can do that reduction and I want to be uh, to finish off with reduced row echelon form, which is shorthand for RREF. That's the final product, which would look something 
like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use and take advantage of technology and to do that. Uh, particularly, I'm going to use uh, a TI-84. So I'm emulating this on my um, computer here. I'll make this as big as possible. So here's a TI-84. Uh, I'm going to clear it. So there's kind of my screen on the TI, so it's split up like that. I'm going to use the matrix part. So I'm going to go second. You see the button for matrix here. I'll go ahead and use my arrow button and go to edit. Uh, and I'm going to edit the first matrix called A. Notice it drops here. I am going to have three rows and uh, how many columns here? <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four, five columns. So uh, I'm going to go over here, five columns. And I'm going to go ahead and enter my matrix here. I'll do that quickly. Uh, I'll get my numlock working here. Three. Sorry, that should be a one. Go back and get that right. One, uh, two, negative one. Oh, it didn't like that. Sorry. Um, doesn't like that because of the button I'm using. I'm going to use the negative here. There we go. Negative one, enter uh, one. Zero, enter, go here. Uh, my next row will be two, three, one, one, zero. My next row will be down here. It'll be three, uh, I'll use negative one, two and one and the zero let's check to make sure that's right uh one two minus one one two three one one three minus one two one okay so i've got that entered in so i'll go back here and i'll quit that i'll go back to matrix and I'm going to actually go to math. And under the math menu, if you go down, it's got all kinds of things. You could actually do row reduction here. So if you want, you can do um, row swap, row something times a row, all of that stuff you can do. I'm simply going to just choose reduce row echelon here, RREF of. And then I'm going to go back to matrix. I'm going to choose my first matrix A, close the bracket and hit enter and I'm here. Now I got fractions, I don't like that. I'm gonna change the mode of my calculator. I'm gonna go down, where do I have to go? I'm going to choose radians, thick, full fractions, answers. Oh shoot, it only gives me auto and decimal. So um, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Uh, my handheld will do that better, but uh, you can check that. These are all sixteenths, so on your calculator, you'll be able to change the mode of that. I'm not avail able to do that. But anyways, so ultimately what I've got here is a solution that you could get really well stated. We'll do that um, right here is I've got one, zero, where do I have this? Here we go. One, zero, zero, nine sixteenths, zero, one, zero, one sixteenth, and then zero, zero, one, and then five negative sixteenths, and then one, sorry, then zero, zero, zero here. So this is going to be my RREF that I can get off my calculator, very nicely done, okay? Now, if you wanna look at that and understand that, um, what we're understanding here is that um, this is a, a solution to that. 
system that we had before. So if you look at it, this is A, B, C, D, and my coefficient on the other side, which was a zero. So I'm going to parameterize this uh, in the following way. So this is how I'm going to do that. Parameterize solution. And I'm going to choose my easiest one, which is the D. So I'm going to let, for example, D is equal to T. That's going to be an easier way to parameterize it instead of just relying on D, which is really awkward. So when I do that, I can get a solution that would look something like this. 19 sixteenths uh, X plus 1 sixteenths Y plus negative 5 sixteenths Z plus T equals to 0. So that's a parameterized solution. It's an awkward solution if you notice. Um, I can actually turn it around and write it as 9 sixteenths X plus 1 sixteenths Y plus, or I should say minus, five sixteenths z or z is equal to minus t if you want i can multiply both sides fully by 16 negative and that would give me 9x plus 1y minus 5z equals to and if i parameterize t what did i say uh, minus 16 that would be plus 16 here so that's one way of writing the solution and notice this is now a particular plane, and if you were to test any of those points, they would satisfy this plane. I'm going to test it, just arbitrarily test point one. Our first point, if you remember, was uh, 1, 2, minus 1. So I would take 9 times 1 plus uh, 2 minus 5 times minus 1. Let's see, we're supposed to get 16. So 9 plus 2, 11, and then plus 5 is 16. Yep. So we can see that our points satisfy this plane. But it's not the only plane, and that's a very awkward way of doing it, but that is a parameterized solution and one way of going and writing the solution. Another way, a little more sophisticated, is actually if we go back to this uh, original matrix. So if we go back to the system 1, 0, 0, 9, 16th, 0, 1, 0, 1, 16th, and 0, 0, 1, negative 5, 16th, 0, 0, 0. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this. And if you remember when we were doing this, we had that homogeneous choice to this. So I'm actually going to write this as a system. Let me make this smaller here briefly. So we can see that below. There we go. So what I could do here is rewrite the whole thing in a different way. I can write it in vector form. And in vector form, I might actually look at it from this point of view that I'm actually going to take this and as a vector form, take that vector A, B, C. Now we have to put that in front, right? We have just a sec. An order to this. Well, I'll work it out here. We have a three by one, two, three, four, five. And we have D4. So system-wide, what we really have 
is a four, three by four. Um, that is the one, zero, zero, sorry, nine sixteenths, zero, one, zero, one sixteenths, zero, zero, one, negative five sixteenths. And we shall write that as A, B, C, D. So this is one way to write it in a vector format. And that would be equal to 0, 0, 0, 0. That's one way to parameterize, uh, sorry, to vectorize the solution. So what I'm doing is rewriting the system in vector form. Um, let me try that again so it's a little neater here. So this is a 3 by 4. This is a 4 by 1 over here. And this is a 4 by 1. 3 by 1. Sorry, should equal 0. So it'll be 1, 0, 0, 9 sixteenths. It will be 0, 1, 0, 1 sixteenth, 0, 0, 1, negative 5 sixteenths. That is my coefficients. Then I'll have the parameters or the variables, and that should be 0, 0, 0. I'm sorry, as a homogeneous system. So that's kind of what we've got in that vector format. So since we have the vector form, we can actually write our solution out in the vector form and rewrite it in a different way. Um, so that would actually give us the following kind of expression that A, B, C, D is equal to 9 sixteenths one sixteenth minus five sixteenths and then one t and then if we let t is equal to for example let's say t is equal to negative sixteen that would give us an a b c d particularly we'll make that a little smoother of nine one minus five and then 16. We take that solution and translate it back to uh, the equation of the plane. We would get that 9x plus y minus 5z equals 16 again. So that's another way of writing in parameterized vector form. Uh, and we can do that with many of our solutions. I did it with a homogeneous case for our particular solution, but you can do it also with non-homogeneous cases. But that's just the way of uh, writing that out. We'll do another problem uh, shortly um, soon, um, doing the same kind of parameterization to come up with a solution um, for uh, to describe a line in three space. So we'll see how that works.